going through trials? Jesus. And who do you call on? Jesus. And what do you say? Jesus. And what's his name? Jesus. And what's his name? Jesus. Who do you call? Jesus. When your heart is breaking? Jesus. Who do you call? Jesus. When everything's in shambles? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Won't you help me call up Jesus? Won't you help me call up Jesus? Won't you help me call up Jesus? Hey, put your hands together. Come on, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Listen, listen, listen. We on a fast, right? We on a fast. So the devil comes to attack us while we on a fast with sicknesses and desires, and I smell Popeye's chicken and I want that and I want to say that and do that. But because we're on a fast, we got to do something to get something from God. Amen? Amen. So since I've been on a fast, my job has been threatening me. My job had the nerve to threaten me and say, if you don't do this, we'll do that to you. And I said, what if I change it around and do one extra thing? My boss tells me, and I hope they watch it alive. My boss tells me, she says to me, it doesn't matter what you do. It's never good enough. And I said, I wish I'd have recorded that call. And I said, you know what, when I get off this, off this phone, I'm gonna eat because I'm hungry. I'm, a, I'm aggravated. But I started saying, Jesus, this is not even real. This is woman saying, y'all say Ernest is, is dramatic and theatrical. That I am. That I am. I'm very much that so. But she said that to me and I said, you threaten to fire me? I said, I got two children. I'm the only one working and you want to fire me? Talking about, we're going to put you on probation for six months. Then they called me back and say, we're not doing six months. We're going to take you down to one month. I said, what's going on? I said, I'm sure enough going to eat now. I'm going to eat. I'm going to break my fast and eat because I'm aggravated. I'm upset. I want to eat. And you know what I said to God? I said, if I break this fast because I'm aggravated, I'm turning to food. But I'd have turned to who? Somebody say his name. I said, Jesus, you better arrest the mind of my boss and the hand of the enemy. And I said, God, if I get fired, I'm going to give me some money from somewhere. And when I got the phone, I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Wow. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Can you help me call him? 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 Jesus. Evangelist Leonda and Evangelist.
Chris Doby. Who else got a tambourine? You got a tambourine? You got a tambourine? You. They said in the Bible days, when King Jehoshaphat was going against the enemy, there were three different armies. And King Jehoshaphat said, Oh God, I got three people coming against me. What am I going to do? They said, A little boy who was unnamed, he said, You better send Judah first. And in my mind, I can see the women. Look at me, Yolanda. You talking to him? Look at me. Look at me. They said, Send Judah first. And I can imagine the ladies lining up. The ladies lining up side by side. And they start to beat those. Come on, beat it. Beat those. Come on. Let me hear the tambourine. And they say, Glory to God. We're about to have the victory. And they begin to move like this. Oh, we coming for you, enemy. They begin to move like that. And they came. And then the singers, the singers lined up. And they said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And then the fighters, Jesus. keep on saying the Lord, say it. Jesus. Say Jesus, keep on beating. Jesus. Uh-huh. Jesus. And the people behind them Jesus. were ready to fight. Jesus. And they was walking in slow. Jesus. And they said, when y'all depart, Jesus. We gon' fight. Jesus. But guess what? Jesus. When you send praise first, Jesus. It confuses the enemy. Jesus. It confuses the devil. Jesus. It confuses sickness. Jesus. So when I get to three, Jesus. I want you to stop praising him. Jesus. One, two, Jesus. one, two, three. Keep, keep, keep that beat going. I know, I know I should sing another song because that's what we do. But you got to have common sense to know when to let it go because God is here right now. If the devil has been bothering you and you want to confuse the enemy this morning, we fighting against cancer, we fighting against depression. We fight against strokes. We fight against diabetes. We fight against mental control. We fighting. So I ain't singing no more. But when I get to three, I need everybody in this place to get on one accord. If you don't know how to shout, clap your hands. If you can't clap, beat that tambourine. Listen, listen. Uh -huh, you, you in a good start. See, when I was at my job calling on the phone on Wednesday, y'all wasn't there. So I decided to get amongst my brothers and sisters and act up too. Had the devil been bothering you? Devil been bothering your family? Devil been bothering you? Devil been bothering you? Devil been bothering you? The devil been bothering you? When I get to three, I want you to lose your mind and I'm gonna go sit down. Y'all ready?
a name that we can call on. We got a name. That name is not Mohammed. That name is not Buddha. But there is a name greater than all the other names. And that name is Jesus. Can somebody call him? Jesus. Something about that name. Something about the name Jesus. Something about that name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. So how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love it. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is. It is the sweetest name I know. Something about the name Jesus. Just something about it, right? Something about the name Jesus. In the midst of sickness and trouble it and is turmoil. The that's just something about that name. I know something. And oh, how I love the name Jesus. I love the name. And oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is. It is the sweetest name. I know. I know. Go with me to the book of Galatians. Hit up by sure. Hit up by sure. Oh, yeah. Hit up by sure. I know. And oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is. And it is the, the sweetest, sweetest name. name I know. The book is Galatians, the fifth chapter. One verse in your hearing.
Just keep whispering that name in the atmosphere. The book is Galatians. The fifth chapter, verse 1. Paul speaking to the Galatians. And he's giving them a charge. He's giving them some instructions. And the word of the Lord reads thus. Stand fast. Therefore in the liberty. Wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast. Therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ was a man that did it. Christ has made all of us free. And the charge is to be not entangled again with the yoke or the bondage of sin again. The reading of God's word to the people of the Lord and be blessed and be seated. I like to minister to you just for a moment from this book, this book of Galatians, Paul speaks to those that have been newly converted. But they have a problem that they're interacting and have to deal with the Judaizers. They're trying to bring them back into the law where the law now has been passed and now mercy has been extended. But they wanted to maintain control. So they wanted to start speaking to them about circumcision and all of those things. But now Paul is clear. He tells them, he says, I need you to stand. In other words, take a position. Yes. Amen. There's a saying that those who don't stand for something will fall for anything. Yes. But when you understand what you're standing for, it helps you to stand better. When you understand that the stand that you take will be that that will take you on into eternity. So your stand must be correct. One of the most important things that's given to a boxer is to learn how to stand. When they enter the ring, there's a certain stand that they learn to focus in on. It is at that stand, they always come back to the stand because that's solid. Amen. Things will run up against them, but they will go back to the stand. Amen. If the saints of God will go back to the stand, we will be better than what we are today. Go back to the stand of prayer and fasting. So today, as we go into this text, I want to speak to you about traps. Traps. You don't want to be trapped. It's an awful thing to be trapped. Amen. That's what he was saying. Don't be entangled. Amen. Entanglement means that you're trapped. You can't get out of a situation. And, and once you get tangled up in something, it's hard to get out of something that you've been tangled up in. That's why the saints of all used to say I'm wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in Jesus. But Paul tells them you don't need to go back to those old things. Uh, in my research and my study in the text on today, I could not help but to fall back a little and remember one of the greatest orators and reverends and doctors that the world has ever known, the Honorable Dr. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, a man who fought for civil rights. Tomorrow, Many of you will be celebrating the day off. Amen. But do we really understand what was uh, laid upon his shoulders that we may have what is called freedom? And I want you to understand that we are yet not still free. 
in America, there's still bondages and there's still shackles and things that we have to undergo. Look at your government. Amen. We still have to undergo some stuff. So the fact of the matter, even though you live in a free country, there's still some things that are still not free to the black man. We're still battling things that should have been done with, but we're still facing those things today. And many times in the church, we forget, amen, we become so God conscious that we forget about those who fought for us. I would like to believe that King was called to do what he did for us. I would like to believe that he marched on lines and stood in lines and went to jail to fight for something that he did not even see come to pass. But he did it because of the charge that was given him. He had a stand to take and he took the stand. So when that word liberty is used in the text, it means the power to do as one pleases. Liberty, stand in the liberty where God has set you free. The liberty, the power, the freedom uh, from physical restraint. Freedom, amen, liberty gives us liberty. So uh, if you will walk with me for a moment, I ran across one of Dr. King's speeches that resonated in my spirit for the text today. And he did this letter a man while he was in a Birmingham jail. Very uh, uh, on point because most of Paul's letters are written from a prison. You must understand when you're fighting for a thing that they may try to imprison you, but you have to know how to be in prison and still be free. Amen. It's hard to be in something and still be free. Dr. King said wars have been fought for it. Treaties and pacts have been formed to ensure it. Men and women have sacrificed everything for the chance to experience freedom. Martin Luther King wrote this in 1963 from a Birmingham jail. Hear what he says. Freedom is never given voluntarily by the oppressor, but it must be demanded by the oppressed. Powerful statement. It's never given to you. You have to fight for it. For us to exist in this thing, this race called the earth, we have to fight to exist. Yeah, you got the Holy Ghost, but you still got to fight. Every day there is a battle, there's a war going on that we raise up every morning to be a part of. King said you must demand it. In other words, you must tell the devil, the oppressor, I demand my freedom for it will not be given to you freely. Just because there is freedom don't mean it will be given to you. See, many of us think that we have freedom, but freedom is never given to you. Amen. It is something that you must demand. Amen. When you go in certain places and people that are not like us, there's certain things we have to demand because we understand our rights and we understand our freedom. King says, and I quote, there is a situation where the lion meets the lamb. A dichotomy to that struggle. Peacefully achieve freedom is not a safe for threat. It must be fiercely defended as if we would earnestly attain. But because of the peace upon which that freedom is built, its integrity is unsaleable. And end of quote. King had the understanding that God had called him to lead a people. 
And I know some of y'all say, well, he was baptized in Jesus' name to your knowledge and filled with the Holy Ghost. I understand that. But God will use whom he will. We were, we, we were talking about Jonah this morning. Jonah was not baptized in Jesus' name to my knowledge. Neither had he heard that word. But he was used for that time and that season. My point and reference to Dr. King is we should never forget those that have paved the way for us and just uh, uh, take the holiday just to be a holiday to be off and go shopping. But we should acknowledge that we were uh, in a situation where our voices were not heard and someone had the go. They had the will. They had the ability to trust in a God that they would be able to bring some satisfaction to this black race and the human race. Yeah, yeah, understand it. This is not my Dr. King sermon. But I want you to understand as I bring Paul into this message, we must understand that there are traps set for every one of us. We deal in a world that is constantly setting traps. We often find ourselves trapped in various aspects of life trapped. Uh, we may feel trapped in a job, Brother Ernest, that brings no fulfillment, in trouble, in situations of relationships, trapped in addiction, trapped by our fears of insecurity, trapped suffocating under the burden of despair and the causes to lose sight of God trap but when we understand the source the source is always sin sin is always the trap that opens the door for the enemy to take control over our lives uh, Brother Ernest said today that when he got word, the first thing he had made up in his mind to do was break his fans. That's what the enemy wants us to do. That when we feel trapped and back up against the wall, that ain't the time for you to give in to the situation. It's time to turn your face to the wall and call on Jesus. I want you to know that sin disguises itself and it can become very attractive and healing in some cases. It leads us into the never end cycle that ends up with guilt. Go ahead and give it to your flesh but I promise you there will be restless nights when you lay in the bed and say God don't call me tonight I'm not ready. I know some of you have never been there before. But there has been nights you laid down and said, Lord, please don't take me tonight. Not tonight. Not tonight. I'm not ready tonight. Don't take. Don't come tonight. But because we have no power on when the Lord shall call our name, it behooves us to be ready to be ready to go back with the Lord. I want you to understand, as I told you, the sources. Uh, but there is another power that supersedes traps. And that is the power that Christ gives us in him. He said, be liberated. Accept the liberty. Uh, there is a freedom to the people of God that understands who they are. That although I might be in a trap, I know that if I stay here long enough, God's going to come for me. I know that if I pray just a little while longer, he's going to come by and rescue me. I understand I got a track record that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. So this is just a temporary trap. Temporary trap. It's temporary. It's temporary. Enemy wants you to make you believe that it's going to be forever. But I dare you to while you in it. Learn how to pick up your feet and begin to praise God in it. That makes the enemy 
angry. Liberated. Liberated says that I have the power. Amen. It says that I've got the liberty. I've got the freedom. That even though I'm in a situation, I still got freedom. I got freedom even behind a jail cell. I've got freedom. Liberation. Liberation. Uh, uh, I want you to understand that when we serve God, who is passionate about setting us free from every one of our bondages, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, through his death and his resurrection, uh, we are able to stand flat-footed and know that even if, like the Hebrew boys say, uh, even if he don't come for me, uh, if he picks the way of the grave, uh, uh, I'll be all right either way. Either way it works out, I still win. When you understand that you still win, when affliction may come, sickness may come, but I understand that if I belong to Christ, I still win. Tell somebody I still win. It may look like I'm going, not going to get out of it, but I still win. I know it looks like it seems like it's hopeless, but I'm still a winner because all he can do is take my life. But at the end, my soul belongs to Christ. At the end of the day, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those that remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. So I've got the name of Jesus I've got the name I'm satisfied with having the name I'm satisfied with trading in the old for the new I'm satisfied with a little affliction every now and then I'm satisfied with Jesus amen because he's been my comforter he's been my guide he's been my bridge over troubled water he's been the one to wipe the tears from my eyes he's been with me through the journey he knows my uprisings and my down settings. He's been with me through the mess. He's been with me through my good days. He's been with me through my bad days. He's never left me. He's never never left me. Others have turned around and left me. Others walked out on me. But God was always there. Isn't it good that at the morning time, when the sun shines, and you can say, good morning, Jesus. I start my morning that way. Good morning, Jesus. <laughs> Good morning. I don't know what you brought me through through the night hour, but I come to say good morning. Uh, the deaf angels may have walked through my room, but I want to tell you good morning. So I have a liberation. I have a power in Christ that makes me uh, to understand who I am in him. It's not until you recognize who you are and who you belong to that you can walk in the liberty. That's why he says stand uh, fast in the liberty where with who Christ has set you free. Which means I don't care how good a friend you are. I don't owe you nothing. You didn't come and get me. Sometimes you got to look back at your life and when folks say later for you, I ain't thinking about you, don't bother me. Hey, you got to look back over your life and say, wait a minute. You were not there. You were not there. <laughs> when I had to stand at a grave and turn around and walk back to my car, you may have been there, but you didn't go home with me. When I walked through that door and locked that door, you were not there. But oh God, you were there. Your presence never left me. Your presence stayed with me. Even through all of the heartache and pain. So I understand I have a liberation. That is why that when we come to the house of God, liberated people act different from people that are not liberated. Free people act different than people that are not free. You can't praise God, and I understand why some of y'all keep your hands down because you're still in shackles. 
I understand why you can't move your feet because there are shackles on your feet. I understand that. I understand you can't open your mouth because there's something holding your mouth. But when you understand that God took the shades off my wrist and he took them off my feet and he opened my mouth, I'll jump up and down. I'll wait. Just do it sometime to let the devil know to say, ha ha, I'm free. Shake your hands and say, I'm free. Ain't no shackles on these hands. The minute I hear the name of Jesus, I I throw those. Ain't no shackles on this feet. I can dance. Because I'm liberated. I'm a free man. I'm not a bond man. I'm a free man. If you walk through the text before uh, Paul gets here, he talks about the bond man and the free man. There's a difference between the bond man and the free man. The free man gets privileges. The bond man only gets what's given to him. But when you're free, it gives you freedom. It gives you freedom in the kingdom. That everything in the kingdom belongs to me because I am free. So, we have the power of liberation. We understand that it is the enemy's job to trap us. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes if you allow this thing called your mind... It will trap you. Yeah, yeah. You could be prisoner in your own mind. That's the worst prison. At least with a still one, I could walk out of that one. I got to carry this one with me. That's why I say, who, he who the sun set free is free indeed. I got to keep a freedom. I can't afford to go back to prison. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I can't afford to go back to prison. I know what prison is like. I got to rely on the enemy to bring me out. When I didn't know Jesus in the pardon of my sins, I relied on me. Which was driven by another force that I didn't understand. I didn't understand the spiritual uh, understanding of what it meant to be walking in sin. I want to tell y'all that sin is an awful thing. And we have painted it up and put mascara on it and nail polish on it and try to make it look good, but sin is sin. And the Bible says the soul that sinneth shall die. I want you to understand that in the church today, we got to get rid of sin. Uh, they say, oh, there you go, there you go. Well, there I go. Because a house divided against itself cannot stand. You can't serve Baal and God in the same house. You can't serve Mohammed and God in the same house. He said, behold, I am a jealous God. And I will have no other gods before me. Somebody said, well, I don't serve them. You serving something if you ain't serving God. Because we were created to serve something. Oh yeah, God created us to serve. And if you don't serve God, you're going to serve something. People say, oh, how can you say that? Well, growing up in Brooklyn, on Sunday morning, the thing that the men would do, they wasn't going to church. A lot of them. But Sunday would be the day they go out and clean their cars. Everybody on the block would be cleaning their cars. Oh, they be polishing them up. And women and children be going to church. But they would be out cleaning the car. You say, well, what are you saying? That was their God. Uh, that was the day that you're supposed to get up and go and give God praise. You're supposed to go to the house of God. Thank him for the car that you're putting the wax on. Thank him for providing and helping you pay for it. But you out there polishing your God. 
polishing them up. I've learned, saints, that as you get older, that you are the wear the Bible says wear this world as a loose garment. Stuff and things used to excite me. And I, I ain't gonna lie, it used to really excite me. You know, like, ooh, you got that? Wow. But now that I understand that I got a soul that got to get to heaven, I can't allow an automobile, a woman, a child, anybody stop me from getting to heaven. Bible says what profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul. My soul is a state. Young people, your soul's at stake. Look at your artists. They're dying. They got disease. They got 50 houses and still not satisfied. Got 50 wives and still ain't satisfied. The more they get, the more they want. It feeds them like a fire. The more you put on it, the more they want. Give me more, give me more, give me more. At some point, you understand that if my body is afflicted, not none of that stuff can heal me. When I get a prognosis from the doctor, Mary J. Bly can't sing to me. Y'all know I like Patty. But not even Patty can say anything to me. But then the Bible says I got to look to the hills. From which cometh my help. I've got to understand for God I live, for God I die. If I'm going to be saved, Bob George, get saved. Ain't no need in faking this thing. You can leave now if you don't want to be holy. Why waste your time in here? Why waste your time? I'm here because I'm preparing. This is the place of preparation. Why leave a sinner when you can go home and say, Wow. The liberation. I'm concerned about the liberation. I'm concerned about the stand that the church is taking when the world is doing everything. But there must be a stand. I heard one preacher say, Well, we got to do something for our young people because if we don't keep them excited, they're going to leave and they're going to go. But then I concur that when I was coming along, Pop didn't do a whole lot for us. He opened the door and let us have church. And we came to church. That was the excitement. When the Holy Ghost would take over on Friday night, that would be the excitement. We would spend hours speaking in tongues and running the aisles. And I ask you a question. Has God changed? Sometimes we give them so much stuff until they miss the obvious. They miss what it's like to get on your knees until you hear from God. They miss a real move from God. I don't mean somebody telling them, say this, say that, do this, jump up, turn around, step back, sit back, sit down. I'm talking about a real move of God that moves over them and their little hands begin to go and their mouths begin to open and they begin to praise God. There is a stand. And along with a stand comes a standard. Uh, there is a standard. If you want to be holy, there is a standard. There is a price to pay to get what God has for you. There is a standard. And it cannot be 
be manipulated or watered down. You must conform to this word. The Bible said be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, there's a stand. There is a standard that God is calling no, we can't look like everybody else. No, we can't do what everybody else does. There is a standard. Standards. I know people don't like them because they sometimes speak to rules and regulations. But I'm not giving you no more than what the Bible says. If the Bible says do it, then that's the standard. If that is what the Bible says, that is what we do. We don't do according to what man feels. We don't do according to what commentary tells you. But we do according to what is written. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I came bringing the word this morning. I didn't come to play this morning. I got a mandate on my life. I got a position that I got a hold and a stand that I got a hold on to. And if others don't want to go so long, goodbye. But I mean to stand for Christ. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. After I've done everything that I need to do, I need the finisher. I need someone to finish it. After I've walked through everything that I need to do, I need somebody to finish it. You're just on the journey. You're not finished yet. There are some doors you have to walk through. There are some things you've got to endure. Like it or not, you've got to endure. So dry your eyes, throw your back back, and begin to open your mouth and thank God that he counted you worthy. Sometimes we're not appreciative enough. You know, sometimes you have kids and you do stuff for them and you're waiting for the thank you. You're waiting for the thank you. My granddaughters love them, love them. They can get wherever I got. And I think they know that. But we're opening gifts and L'Oreal was like, oh, Grandpa, Gigi, oh, ooh, I love it. Lady J's like looking. Uh, you like it? Yeah, we saw you like that, so we got that. Oh, yeah, I like it. Oh, I can't wait to get home to wear this. And being the Jamaican that my wife is, she says, thank you. They said, oh, yeah, thank you. But it's not that I don't think that they were grateful. Sometimes the word thank you it's just not in our vocabulary. And as saints of God, we've got to be better where Jesus is concerned. You may not be having the best of a day, but if God woke you up this morning, it's a best day. Amen. It's a good day. So you need to learn how to tell Jesus, thank you. I don't have a whole lot of money, but thank you. I met the bills this month. Thank you. I went out and came back in. Thank you. My children are all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you gets you a lot. The more you thank him, the more he'll do for you. Would you just learn how to tell him thank you? Oh, steps to freedom. I would not want you to believe that Dr. King went through all that he went through just to get a name. 
when someone is willing to give their life, that's a big deal. And I thought about what Dr. King did, but then I flipped the script and I said, but my God, look what Jesus did. Look what Jesus did. King, <laughs> King did not uh, uh, know really what the outcome was going to be. And he didn't have a chance, he didn't have the opportunity to change it. But Jesus, who has all power, who had the power to say, no, nah, I ain't going to do that. They ain't going to be thankful. They are not going to really do what they're supposed to do. I don't think I'm going to do that. And with all of the information that Jesus had on us, he still went to the cross. He still went to the cross. With everything he knew about us, he still went to the cross. Everything that he knew about us. He knew how we would be. And he still went to the cross. For us. And not just for us, but as many that will call on the name of Jesus can be saved. As many that will come through the water and the baptism in Jesus' name, the infilling of the Holy Ghost can have this freedom. So, maintaining freedom. Got to maintain it. Everything needs maintenance. If your worship is dusty, it's because you ain't been maintaining it. If you got to do it, if people got to do a whole lot to work you up, I don't have the energy that my son Ernest has. But when you do maintenance, the car will always perform. Did y'all get that? Some of y'all are slow. Write it down. When it's maintained, the car will perform. It is when the car is not maintained that it does not perform. When you get ready to go away, one of the things you do, you make sure that the car is tuned up. Yeah, I come from the southern family. Whenever they got ready to go where they say, I'm going down home, they would tune the car up. They would take it in, tell the mechanic, look it over, whatever it costs. I just don't want to, I got to go to Georgia. And I can't be breaking down in Carolina and Virginia and I can't, I got to get to where I got to go. So when they pull it in, Deacon Houston, when they pull it into your shop, you are like a, a Jesus to the car. Your job is to fine tune it and make sure that everything is going to work properly. It is like that in salvation. We're on a journey and some of us need to pull the car into the shop. And let God work on the, sh on the car. Because I got a long journey ahead of me. I don't know how long I got, but I got some miles to put in. And I can't afford to be in a car that's going to be breaking down. I got to keep on moving. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I've got to keep on moving because the enemy is trying to trap me. Sometimes when your car's in good shape, you will blow through the traps. Amen. Because your car's in shape. Steps to freedom. Number one. Repentance and confession. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge specific uh, areas in which you feel trapped. Yeah, you know what you're dealing with better than anybody else. Acknowledge them. And then take them to God. Amen. The Bible tells us that if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves. So notice what he says, called by my name. At that time, Israel didn't even know his name. Amen? But he said, my people. So let us know that it's, amen? Uh, uh, they could say Yahweh. They, 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 they were calling him everything, but they didn't have his name. But now, this is his home. He said, if my people 
that are called by my name will do what? Humble themselves. Uh huh. And what do what? Pray. And after you pray, he tells you to see who? My face. Amen. And then turn. 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 There's got to be a turning. There's got to be a turning. You, you, well, once you do this, you've got to turn. And he said, from your wicked ways. He says, and then, and then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins. And then I will heal their land. America's in trouble because they won't turn, because they won't bow, because they won't submit. Amen. And this is the end time that we're living in. They have made up their mind. America's made up their mind that this is how we're going to live. And God says, I'm shortening the days. I'm shortening the days that the clock is winding down. It looks as if they're getting away, but I would tell you they're not getting away. Amen. They shall pay for that that they've done. Amen. And as a people of God, this is the handwriting on the wall for us. Number two, renew the mind. The mind has to be replaced. Get rid of negative thoughts and patterns. And start inserting the truth about who God is. Start understanding the liberty that he has set you in. Start understanding the stand that God has put you to place, the position that you're in. The Bible says, and be not conformed to what? To this world. Which means that even in the midst of our holiness... One can be conformed to this world. The world can ease it so easily, y'all, and you don't even know it's there. The enemy will have you doing stuff that you don't even know it crept in. You turn around and say, where in the world did I get that from? Some of y'all are still cussing. And you weren't even cussing before you got saved. the world. When you hang around the world, there's a language. There's a conversation. Certain words will fly out of your mouth. You don't believe me? Some of y'all don't be looking at me so saved. There's been some time you reached here and before you know it, you're like, whoa. Hopefully you repented. And didn't add on to the conversation. But he said, then be not conformed to this world. But he said, the answer is to be transformed by what? The renewing. Which means there should be a constant renewing of the mind. Not just a Sunday hit. But there should be a constant renewing of the mind. When you leave here, I think you ought to leave here understanding that whatever's wrong, I got to get right because I want to see Jesus' face and I want to see him in peace. He says that ye may prove that that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Number three, this is the hard one, surrender. Just give up. Give up. If you belong to him and he belongs to you, he is the master now. The Bible says we were bought with a price. Which means I do not belong to myself. Which means that myself needs to just go somewhere, sit down, shut up, and fall in alignment with the word of God. Because you know your flesh will wrestle with you. Amen. You know some stuff is God. And it's amazing to me that whenever God is speaking, have y'all ever had this? You could raise your hand and just say amen. You say, I wonder if that's God. You know it's God. You know it's God. You know it's God. You are sitting here today and the Holy Spirit say to you, I want you to give a thousand dollars. You say, well, I wonder. Yeah. He ain't never told me to do that before. That got to be the devil. No, no. 
God will sometimes ask you to do some things that are way beyond your reach. That's how you know it's God. Amen. It's stuff that you would not feed into, but because you know his voice, you surrender. And along with surrendering comes dependence. When I've learned to depend on Jesus, not on man, not on woman, but I've learned to depend on Jesus. Many of us, that's why we're here. We're here because we depended on Jesus. Some of us can't tell you how we got from there to here, but we can tell you that we depended on him. So, brothers and sisters, as I conclude, I want you to understand that just because we're saved doesn't mean that the enemy don't set traps. All throughout the Bible, there was traps set. David fell into traps. Bathsheba was a trap. Samson had a trap. Amen. Traps, traps, traps. Kings, good kings had traps. That caused them to forego what God wanted them to do because they fell into traps. Young ladies, traps. He ain't all that good looking. Traps. Traps. Young men, she ain't all that bad. Traps. Sometimes you get something, you thought you got a diamond, and you got a zirconian. It looked like a diamond, but baby, it ain't a diamond. Check your ring, baby. Check your ring. Check your ring. If you don't know nothing, you need to know the difference between a zirconian and a diamond. They both look nice, but only one is real. <laughs> Brothers, I'm sorry. The wives are looking at their rings, and I promise you, lady farmer, that's real. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, it's, it's real. <laughs> she probably done already been to the jewelers, you know. <laughs> but I say, I say to you all that we're living in a very rough time. And the church is the place where people are coming to be delivered. We have a standard. And the standard is holiness. The Bible says, from which, which no man shall see the Lord. There is no other way. Amen? Holiness. And there shall be a road. Straight is the way. Narrow is the way. But broad Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. So today, I encourage you in this year of 2024, watch out for the traps. They're out there. Be aware. Gird your minds up. Scriptures equip you like men. Understand. That the enemy that we're fighting never plays fair. Never plays fair. So today I encourage you. Perhaps you're here today. And you've been put in a trap. Don't know how you got there. Don't even remember when it happened. But you find yourself in 
It could be a relationship. It could be a financial situation. It could be something that you're going through on the job. But it's a trap. It's a trap to draw you away from God. So today, I read to you out of Galatians 5 and 1. That says, stand ye there, therefore, in the liberties where with Christ set us free. Stand fast in the liberties. I want you to understand that in order to receive this liberty, this freedom, the Bible says you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. It is necessary to receive this liberation, to be able to stand that you do it according to God's word. And it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So today, if you're here, God's word said that you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. Bible also tells us that there's no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. And that name is Jesus. Jesus is the authority. He is the power that you need. So if I'm talking to you, I want you to get up. This is 2024. Come on. God can get you out of that trap. Come on, he can break down the prison walls. He can take the shackles off your hands. If I'm talking to you and you have not been born again of the water and of the spirit, I want you to come now. These ministers are standing here waiting for you. They're waiting. Just as servants, just to lead you to him. You've heard the word of God today. Now, what are you going to do about it? After you hear something, there's always a decision that you have to make after you've heard what it is that you've heard. So today, if I'm talking to you, get up while the saints are praying. Come on. Home can be better. The job can be better. Things can be better. But you need Jesus. I'm not telling you that there won't be rough days. There will be. But what makes it so different, Jesus goes with you. And he made a promise to all of his believers. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I'll be with you always, even until the end. So if I'm talking to you and you need that assurance today, I want you to come down this aisle. While the saints are praying. If you need prayer today, I want you to get up. And those of you that know you need prayer, just get up. We don't want to prolong this. If you know you need something, it's like going to the grocery store. When you run out of stuff, you know I got to go to the grocery store. You get up and you simply just come. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. It's just a while they're coming, I need y'all to pray. They're coming.
no more chains. No more chains hold in me. My soul is and resting. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Raise yeah, that up again, yeah, son. Yeah. Yeah. I am free. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm free.
give God a praise. Come on and give God a praise. No more chains. No more shackles. Hold it, me. My soul is resting. I said my soul is resting. My soul is resting. My soul is resting. Praise the Lord. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. As we prepare to go to the Lord's table. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary, oh, the blood, the blood that gives me strength. Yeah. From day, from day, day. Oh, 
Luka. Oh, the blood. The blood won't lose its power. The blood, the blood, yeah. Ah, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. 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 Hey. Hallelujah. Oh. Lift your hand and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For your blood. Hallelujah. Thank you for thank your blood. You. out of 1 Corinthians verse 23 chapter 11 verse 23 to 34 amen it says for I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped saying, this is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye do drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show forth the Lord's death until he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the Lord's body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not deserting the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should be not condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home. The rest that, that ye may come, not to, come together not unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come now humbly to this table. And Father, we ask that you shine the light down from heaven. Father, we ask now that you forgive us of all of our sins and iniquities. We come to this table with nothing hid because you know all about us. You know our shortcomings. You know where we are. But Father, please don't let us eat and drink damnation unto ourselves. We are discerning what we're doing. We understand that this has to do with your death, your burial, and your resurrection. That there is power in your blood. So Father, I ask right now that you would touch everyone here under the sound of my voice and those that are listening through the airway. Father, I pray right now, God, that you would help us today. Add to us, God, as we partake of this body and blood. Heal, set free, and deliver. And Father, we thank you for it now. Now, Father, we consecrate this bread and this fruit of the vine. And Father, we do it and acknowledge you as being Lord and King over our lives. And Father, we thank you right now for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Deacons, you all have. Amen. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If you do not have, amen, just raise your hand and one of the ushers will come and serve you. Amen. Hallelujah. Everyone taking the cup in your hand. Flip it over. Get the bread out. Glory. Shama. Body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken for you, take and eat. Glory. 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 Lifting that cup up, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for you. Take, drink ye all of it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. That's it.
And in the name of our God, we'll set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we're risen and stand upright, everyone standing Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Jesus, our God and our Father, we thank you. We thank you that you brought us from one week to another. And Father, you've supplied our needs all week long. You kept a roof over our head. You kept food in the cupboard. God, you took care of us, God. You, 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 you cost our cars not to quit on us. We were able to get from point A to point B. Father, you took us over mass transportation, God, and brought us back in safely. So, Father, today, as this is the first day of the week, God, we come to bring our tithes and our offerings to you. Father, you said that we had to bring them to the storehouse. And, Father, that if we bought them, that we would bring a tenth of our tithe and that we would bring an offering. So, Father, as we come in compliance with your word, we ask, God, that you bless us for this that we're doing. Father, we're not doing it to be seen, but, God, we're doing it because your word requires it. And, Father, we count it an honor to be able to bring our sacrifices to you. Accept them today, God, as we bring them. Multiply them. Turn them over and over and over and over and over. Let our children receive the blessings that we receive and their children and their children's children. And Father, we thank you now for it. And Father, let there always be bread in this house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. For those of you that are standing, there's several ways to give. You can give. That information is on the screen. So I do not need to reiterate that. We ask that you govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. You are now in the hands of the ushers. Amen. Follow their instructions. Thank you.
is good for he is worthy worthy for he is good yes he is good for he is worthy worthy for he is good yes he is good oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good yes he is good Thank you for your prayers, amen, and for being followers of Christ's Pentecostal temple. May the Lord continue to bless you, and now may the abiding grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, rest, rule, and abide within your hearts, henceforth, now, and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen, and amen. Go in the peace of the Lord. God bless you, amen. Look forward to seeing you all next week. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. We are now officially off the air.